This exercise is a funk groove that's played with the plectrum, and it was inspired by bass players such as Bobby Vega and Cody Wright. It's based on a continuous semiquaver feel, and it's quite complex. So before we start on the line itself, let's take a look at the picking technique that's required to play it. So if you take a crotchet beat and subdivide it into four semiquavers, the best way of playing that with the plectrum is to apply a down-up, down-up picking motion. Now, if you're able to stick to those picking strokes on those different subdivisions of the beat, you should find that the line comes together relatively easily. The benefit of playing in this way is that you'll always land on a down beat with a strong down stroke, which will make playing lines like this a lot more comfortable. Let's take a look at the line itself. Okay, so we're going to start this exercise by playing C at the third fret of the A string. Now, this note falls on the final semiquaver subdivision of beat four of the counting, so it's going to be played with an up stroke, down, up, down, up. So we play that note and then we're going to slide into the D at the 5th fret. Now the D is the first note of the first bar. Now usually this would be played with a down stroke, but because we slid into the note, we don't need to play it at all with the picking hand. The next note that we're going to play is the octave D at the 7th fret of the G string, and that's going to be played with an up stroke as well. And we're going to follow that note with a dead note on the D string, and then we're going to play the A at the 7th fret of the D string. And again. Now, if you followed the correct sequence of pick strokes so far, you should be ready to now play a down stroke on beat 2. And we're going to play a C at the 5th fret of the G string. So that in itself makes for a really good mini exercise, which will uh, really be useful for you uh, in terms of getting the pick strokes um, in the right place and getting a groove happening. If you can do that short piece of music, you'll be uh, well placed to finish the exercise successfully. Okay, so moving on from the C, we're gonna play two ghost notes, and then we're gonna end the second beat by playing the G at the fifth fret of the D string. <laughs> Now that G, we're going to uh, allow it to ring into the third beat. You want to be fretting it with your fourth finger. And we're going to play a, a bluesy lick. So we're going to play the G. We're then going to slide up to A flat, back to the G, and then pull off to the F. And that's all played in one pick stroke. So you only pick the string once, but the rest of those notes are played with uh, slides and a pull off. And we're going to finish the beat by playing a D and a C on the A string. So that's three beats of the first bar. It's going to sound like this. And again. Okay, for the fourth beat of the bar, we're going to play three ghost notes and then finish the bar on the F sharp down at the second fret. Now, technically, it doesn't matter where you play a ghost note, but in this instance, I'm going to recommend that you play the first two on the A string, down up, the third one on the E string, and then we're going to play the final note of the bar, the F sharp, with an upstroke. So that's the first bar in its entirety. It's going to sound like this. Let's move on to the second bar. Okay, the second bar is a little bit easier to play than the first one. We're going to start with two ghost notes on the E string, and then we're going to play a hammer on from G to A. That brings us to beat two, where we're going to play a C. So, so far we have this. Now after the C, we're going to play two further ghost notes, and then we're going to play the F sharp at the second fret again. And again. Now for beats three and four of the bar, we're going to move everything up two frets. So we're going to play two ghost notes again, and then we're going to play a hammer on from A to B, and then we're going to play the D at the fifth fret of the, uh, of the A string. So, so far. We're going to follow that D with a couple of ghost notes, and then we're going to finish the bar by playing the C at the third fret. And that's the same C that then slides back into uh, the D at beat one of the next bar. So we've got two complete bars now, and they should sound like this. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's move on to the next two bars in the exercise. Bar three is the same as bar one, but in bar four we have a different fill. So we're gonna play exactly the same thing as bar two up as far as the first F sharp. And then we're gonna do something different. So we're gonna go this far. Now at this point, we're gonna walk up chromatically uh, from F sharp to A. So F sharp, G, G sharp, A. And we're gonna play a ghost note just before each one of those notes. So bar four so far sounds like this. And we're gonna finish off the bar by playing a ghost note on the A string. And then finally, we're gonna play the C, which will then slide back into the D for the beginning of uh, bar one uh, as the line repeats. Okay, one final thing that I'd like to mention with this exercise is the use of rhythm. Now, we've filled up pretty much every subdivision in this exercise with uh, ghost notes, which has given the line a very percussive, very funky feel. Now, we can enhance that even further by putting heavy accents onto beats two and four of the bar. And this will almost be like playing with a drummer because um, uh, beats two and four is where a drummer would play a snare drum. So I'm gonna play the exercise for you now. I'm gonna accent uh, beats two and four quite heavily, just so you can hear um, how effective this can be. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the first bass lick of the week. If you'd like to download the audio files and PDF worksheet, just head to baselinepublishing.com and click on free stuff on the main menu. I'll see you next week for another bass groove. Thank you.